Hi guys, this is Jay Lee. Hope all is well. I just wanted to thank everyone who came over to our last meetup at Hollydale Park on October 28th, 2018. We always have a great time together, but I just wanted to thank all the fantastic UFO communicators for doing such a great job. Thank you to Charles and John for helping me uh, with the telescope. The clouds began to break up around 12 o'clock-ish, and uh, it was just a beautiful day with some great people. But before I begin with this next episode, I just wanted to show you this. I call this indications of imitation. It's the subtle differences between what is real and what is artificial. It's the giveaways that an object will reveal in order for you to determine whether or not it, this is real or if it's fake. I truly believe that anything that we send up in the sky can be duplicated and made functional. I encourage people not to prejudge or judge an object, any object that we see up there, too quickly. You must have patience and also you must see things up closely because these things emulate objects. It's extremely important for you to examine the characteristics, including the kinesiology, the movement of the object. When you see something that uh, doesn't fit the typical pattern, you have to call it out. Another thing to keep in mind about indications of imitation is that you cannot deny what's obvious to see. Don't judge too quickly. After all, we did set the time, date, and place where we want these objects to appear. So it's important to examine everything. So here's the first one of the day. I was able to capture this one with my Panasonic V550 and my telescope. You know, just to let you know, we're not supposed to be seeing these things. Yes, we were able to spot these with our eyes, but there's no way you can see these things up close without a high-powered camera, binoculars, or a telescope. You know, I'm not saying that this is a UFO. I'm just saying that if there was an indication of imitation, I would look at the tether. Now, if you take a look at this tether closely, you'll see it's almost like, it looks like a tube, but you can see it's like a spiraling tube. Notice that all of the tethers are of the same length. The typical cluster is tied at the bases, not at the very end. This one looks like it's almost been braided, like a corkscrew. To me, it looks like a tail. The thickness of your average tether is paper thin. Seven of them would be nothing. I stayed on this one for a little while because I'm telling you, every once in a while, a UFO will shoot right by it. Here's another one I thought looked weird. It's not uncommon for some of these normal looking balloons to transform. It's called pleomorphism. This is when they can take on different shapes. For this one, this one changed shapes when it started to get extremely bright and reflective. It's also not uncommon to catch some of these things in the middle of a transformation. So they may end up looking contorted or distorted. As usual, I looked on the internet for this one. I couldn't find it. I encourage people to look this up on the internet, see if they can find it. This one seemed like it couldn't make its mind between a number two, a number nine, or an eight. Also, notice the balloons that are hanging from the bottom of this structure. They seem to be glued to the bottom of this structure. Definitely strange. So this last one I found strange because it did something amazing. I'll show you in just a moment in a live capture. This was an orb that was perfectly round but with a non-protruding black colored necktie. That's not normal. The indications of imitation are number one, this one didn't have a tether. 100% of latex balloons sold in stores are tied with a tether. You have to be suspicious. Number two, latex balloons are typically oblong in shape, not perfectly round. And number three, carry the same color necktie as the balloon structure. Now the necktie might be a little bit darker than the rest of the structure, but not completely black. So here's a live footage of the bud or stalk that protrudes from the bottom of this structure. It's really amazing. Might be a little oblong. It's a little nipple. <clears throat> yeah, I'm sorry, I was calling it a yoke, but nipple. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is it? Is that? Is that a tag? Um, no, it doesn't look like it's ex it's protruding. It's just kind of. There's no tether. Oh, you got it. There's no tether. Sweet. There's no tether. It's a nipple. But. Is it dark? 
or is it is it a tether no. tag? Center, center. No, you're good. It's just a dart. It's good. Pull, is it? Yeah. Is, we're calling is it, it light? A nipple? Light enough? Yeah. Yeah. You know where, yeah, the, where you blow it up? Yeah. I'm gonna go one notch lighter. Is it up long? Come down. Get a little high. Okay, wait. Something's. No, check it out, dude. What's that? What's that? It, that, that nipple area is like something Dark. was coming out of it. Something's coming out of it? Not anymore. It looked like it was, it looked like maybe it was the way it was rotated at that time. But. You cannot pretend you do not see that protrusion. This is not some sort of chromatic aberration. This is the real deal. This is the indication of imitation that they wanted us to see. And now you know. We called for this and it came to our location. You know, it's hard enough to see the normal structures in our skies. How much harder would it be to see weird stuff floating by? Anyway, thanks for watching this video. I'm hoping you're starting to grasp the concept of atmospheric anomalies. For some reason, they come to our location when we call for them. It's not easy, but we can teach you. They seem to have an affinity toward people whom they trust. People who have seen a UFO in the past, and if you ask me, women, I think they have a better internal dialogue with, like, prayer. I want to thank Fausto Perez, Yasmin Joyner, Mark, Charles, Scott, and John Graf uh, for your communication skills. Please join LA UFO channel on meetup.com and stay tuned for our next event.